Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert from a CSV format, comma separated value or character separated value to ARF, the Weka format, or to do it the other way around from ARF to CSV. I'm actually re-recording this video, so if I mention anything in the next videos about a mistake in this video, then please um, ignore it. So we can actually using the Weka API we can convert from CSV to ARF or from ARF to CSV but before showing you any code let's have a look at for example the Weka ARF format so attribute related I'm sorry attribute relation file format that's what ARF stands for we can read about it it's um, very easy to understand um, and it has three sections so it has header where we provide a list of the attributes or the features that we have um, and then we provide the data in CSV. Uh, did I say three three sections? No, it has two sections. So header and data, header information and followed by data information. So this is what the header looks like. Any line, by the way, starting with the percentage symbol is a comment. Then at relation, so we give the they set a name and then one empty line and then at attribute, the attribute name and attribute type. We can have numerical values or categorical values. The numerical value or string values or even date so if it's numeric or we provide it as numeric if it's um, a categorical then we need to provide a list of all the category or the all the values or the categories of that value within these curly brackets like this for example class here this is categorical so it has three distinct values ars setosa ars versicola and ars virginica and that way we provide a list of all the attributes remember we can have numeric string date or categorical uh, so we that's the header the relation name and then list of attributes and then the data we started with at data and then new line we provide the data in a csv format as you can see each line now represents one example or one instance and the order of the values must match the order of the attributes here now these reserved keywords like relation attribute or numeric or maybe even a uh, uh, data they can be either large case or small case it doesn't really matter so it can be capital case or small case it's not a problem at all now let's go to the code that's only just a sample uh, r if you can read more about the examples and about the uh, uh, different data types or couple numeric nominal string or data as we mentioned before we can also deal with binary values so where the value can only take one of two distinct values um, let me show you some code now on how to um, convert from CSV to ARF. We need to uh, load the required classes. We have a very important class called instances. You must be familiar with this class, uh, worker.core.instances and then worker.core.converters ARF saver and CSV loader. So we load the CSV and then save it into ARF and then that's our uh, class and main method. Notice here I throw an exception to avoid uh, go into the, the, the detail of uh, exception handling, but I am sure that you're familiar with Java and you're familiar with uh, exception handling, so you can you have your own try catch here. So, for example, file here, we need to throw IO exception, but here I'm throwing just a general exception. That's not a good practice, I know, but I just wanted to show you this code rather than teach you exception handling. Now, we load the CSV using CSV loader, as you can see, create a new object of CSV loader, and then set the source file where the, where the file is full path it's on my desktop as you as you can see qdb.csv and then we use a method inside csv loader called get data set and it returns us an object of type instances that's the one we want to deal with so always almost always when we deal with the data we need to be dealing with the instances object this class is very important you must be familiar with it and then to save we create an object of type rf saver uh, we set the instances to the data that we actually extracted here and then we just give it the path, set the file, and then write batch. So there, th th that way we can save that CSV file into the ARF. The other way around, ARF to CSV is just the exact opposite. So we have the instance object, we have ARF loader now instead of CSV loader, and we have CSV saver instead of ARF saver. We load the ARF, so ARF loader equals new ARF loader, create an object of type ARF loader, and then we set the source, where, where's the file, where's the ARF file? And then we get the instances object, which is which I name data here. And then we create a CSV saver object, uh, pass it the data object, the instances object, and 
we just use the set file method to set where the new file is and we just do write batch so that's how to do csv to rf and rf to csv using the worker api one thing i'd like to mention here and i'll be repeating this is that we need to read the documentation this is for example class instances from package worker.co if you can find class um, instances you need to be familiar with this because it represents or it's a class for handling an ordered set of weighted instances we will almost always be dealing with this class and it has a huge list of extremely useful methods we need to read about this and be familiar with them because using it we can we can um, we can manipulate data sets the way we want so we can access for example the first instance or maybe the last instance we can apply filters maybe remove instances according to a certain condition maybe remove instances with a missing class so if we have data with missing class value then we can remove those instances a large list of methods as i said get the number of instances maybe some statistics we can random randomize the instances shuffles the instances in the set um, and so on and so forth as i said there's a large list here of very useful methods that we need to have a look at and we need to be familiar with now i'm going to stop here thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time